Uh, my first question is, uh, we see this as a, uh, or everybody's talking about this as being a huge franchising opportunity, mm. and that Asia accounts only for a small piece of the global opportunity. Uh, what's the opportunity according to you? I think the opportunity is huge, and I also think it needs a lot of support and uh, I guess a bit of TLC, a bit of tender loving care for our <laughs> franchisees. So here in, in, in Asia, for example, one of the things we do differently in Hong Kong is we not only sell the franchise to the franchisee and then put them through a rigorous amount of training and give them a lot of support, but we also help with the things like the lease negotiation. So working with landlord partners like big companies like Sino and uh, AEW, these sort of firms where we try to build a relationship and sell our brand into the, the landlord as well as the, the franchisee. Sure. Uh, what are you getting right? We've just seen the examples of a couple of companies, global large companies that have, that have cracked the franchising model overseas, yes. but haven't quite got it right in Asia, have they? Yes. And you look, our master franchisee, Maurice Levine, who heads up Asia for us, um, he's had 20 years in Asia. And so what he did was he set up a structure different for Intime Fitness than any other part in the world. So in, in every single country in Asia, we have our own person such as myself. I'm the regional agent for Hong Kong. We have the same thing in Singapore. In Singapore, we opened first in Asia. So we opened our first club, August 2013. Last year, we opened 14 clubs in 12 months. So the growth can be huge, it can be strong, and more importantly, it can be sustainable if the structure, the infrastructure is all there to support the franchisee. Are there any challenges that, that are typical to Asia that makes it difficult in the franchising space? Look, I think there's cultural differences in every single country, which is why you need some people on the ground and you need some support in Asia. Mm. So we've set up an Asian support office so our IT support, our customer support, our tr staff training is all Asian-centric with Asian people who have been in the industry helping back up what we do as a franchise model. So is the, again, what's the challenge? Is this about understanding local consumer tastes uh, in whatever business you're in or is it about managing costs? I think managing costs is important and I think also uh, savvy negotiations with landlords to create a win-win environment. And so that's a, a, a definite strength that we think we bring to the table where we we're, we're working with landlords to bring a win-win deal. And I think the other thing that works for us really well is that we've arrived in Asia. So if we look at the US, we look at Australia, 14.8% of people have a gym membership. Sure. Pan-Asia, it's around 3 to 4%. Okay. So what people have said to me, oh, how can you compete in Hong Kong? There's so many gyms and so many players in the market. But all you have to do is increase the, the, the rate by 1%. Huh. So in Hong Kong right now, there's less than 4% of people have a gym membership. If we increase that by 1%, it's over 70,000 people. It adds up. So we know that the trend in fitness is more and more people are coming to the gym. Actually, when I was arrived in Hong Kong last year from Australia, I saw an article in the paper talking about the number of cases of diabetes in Hong Kong is going through the roof and the amount of obesity is growing very, very quickly. So we're here to uh, prevent and circumvent that. We want, we, want, we want to help all people get to a healthier place.